Hi, my name is Clinical Clarness and you're watching a video on the management of exophorias. Now you'll recall from previous videos that I've mentioned that we do not manage an exophoria unless the patient is symptomatic. So one of the things that you will need to determine is that the presenting complaint or the symptoms that the patient is complaining of is directly associated with a length deviation. And generally what you will find is that there is a decompensating exophoria that is leading to the symptoms and you need to manage now this decompensating exophoria. An exophoria with rapid recovery, as an example, does not lead to symptoms. Okay, so the first thing is to determine that you're convinced that the patient's symptoms are related to a decompensating exophoria, and then you go about developing a management plan for that patient. Now, when we manage these patients, what we're aiming to do is obviously relieve the patient of their symptoms. So what you would have found on uh, investigation, particularly on your cover test, is an exophoria with slow recovery or an exophoria that becomes intermittently a manifest exotropia. And so by the end of your management plan, uh, what you want to see is an exophoria with good recovery or rapid recovery. So you want to see that that cover test result improves whereby the exophoria or the recovery of the exophoria is improving, showing better control. With that, you'll have an improved uh, BVA, and you'll also find that elements of convergence will have improved, because this is what we're going to target, as you'll see in a moment. We're going to be targeting uh, convergence to improve the control of the exodeviation. Now, it's worth noting that the best outcomes of conservative treatment for exophorias is when the deviation is relatively small, so somewhere between um, 15 and 20 doctors, or no more than 15 to 20 doctors. The higher the size of the deviation, the more difficulty you will have in assisting your patient in controlling the deviation. When I say conservative treatment, I mean treatment that's non-invasive. So uh, non-conservative treatment would be surgery or uh, injecting Botox into a muscle. Everything else is considered conservative. So these two options that we're going to discuss first are conservative um, treatment methods where you're prescribing glasses or prisms. So when we're thinking about how we're going to manage this patient with a decompensating exophoria, a good way of um, starting to think about your management plan is to go back to that GOODS acronym uh, that we discussed earlier in treatment uh, principles and think about as a first-line treatment uh, optical glasses, can these assist the patient? And generally I would start off with refractive error. Prisms, I tend to consider a little bit later if other uh, orthoptics doesn't assist, but I've put it here on this slide because they're both optical management options. Okay, so with glasses, you go back to the basic principles of the refractive correction of patients with an exodeviation. So in terms of a patient with myopia, fully correct that. A patient with astigmatism, fully correct that. A patient with hypermetropia, under-correct that. Okay, now you shouldn't need to wrote, learn the refractive correction of patients with a decompensating exophoria. You simply go back to the principles of what will be the effect of prescribing this lens to a patient's accommodation and thereby their accommodative convergence? And then you prescribe a pair of glasses that will maximise the control of the deviation. If you want to consider prisms, uh, it's going to be based in prisms because what you're talking about is a patient who is becoming exotropic. They've got an exophoria uh, and therefore have an exotropia intermittently. And as you can see here, the base in prism will bring that image to the fovea and assist the patient. Now, generally, you don't want to prescribe prisms as a permanent solution uh, for the patients. You want to, or we prefer to give them methods of uh, learning how to control the deviation, either through glasses or through improving their binocular functions through orthoptics. Giving a patient a, a prism may improve uh, their symptoms, but doesn't uh, provide the patient the opportunity to learn how to control the deviation on their own. The only way you can do that is if you give the prism initially 
and then wean the patient off the prism so that they can learn how to cope without the prism or how to control the deviation without the assistance of, of a prism. Okay, orthoptics is certainly an option with your decompensating exophorias. You'll recall that you can only give orthoptics to patients who uh, have some control of the deviation and you can thereby improve the control of the deviation. So these are perfect patients where at times they're controlling but they're struggling to control, so let's assist them gain better control of the exophoria. So the types of exercises that we're going to prescribe are convergence type exercises because convergence assists in exodrift. Now you can prescribe convergence exercises which target um, the convergence near point or jump convergence, but generally if you're going to prescribe a simple convergence exercise, then there's an issue with convergence near point. So you shouldn't be prescribing uh, a simple convergence exercise to someone who can actually converge to the nose and that's not the reason why the patient is decompensating. So uh, remember those convergence exercises are really for patients who have a reduction in their um, capacity to converge. So should that be normal, then what I would target is the fusion range or the relative fusional vergences. So here what we could do is give out base out prisms to the patient and target that fusional convergence. So again, you would do this if the fusion range is reduced. So as an example, you know that at near there should be a fusional convergence of about um, 35 prism diopters. So if you found it was only 10 diopters, well, there's an issue there. So you may go to the effort of trying to prescribe base out prisms and assist the patient in, in improving their uh, fusional divergence range, sorry, fusional convergence range. Another possibility is to exercise relative fusional vergences, and in this instance, you're going to be exercising positive relative fusional vergences. So you want the patient converging in excess of their accommodation. Now, less conservative options are the utilisation of Botox or surgical intervention. These should only be considered uh, if the deviation cannot be controlled by other means, so through the wearing of glasses, through um, orthoptic treatment, etc. With the Botox, what you would be doing is weakening the lateral rectus, so injecting Botox into the lateral rectus in order for the patient to take control of the exodeviation. Now, what you're hoping for is that with the Botox in, the patient gains control of the exophoria, and then as the Botox weans off, the patient maintains their control of the deviation. With the Botox in, um, or during the active period of the Botox, you could also prescribe uh, treatments such as orthoptics. Uh, so you could give them stereograms whilst the Botox uh, uh, is active. That could also assist the patient to maintain control once the, uh, the Botox uh, wears off. So surgery may be an option where the deviation is relatively large in size and the patient remains symptomatic despite any orthoptic or conservative treatment you may have prescribed. In terms of what surgery we would prescribe, this would be dependent on the type of decompensating exophoria that is present. So you would go back to the principles of the surgical management of patients with strabismus. And if a patient has a deviation that's greatest in the distance or divergence excess, you would recess the two lateral recti. If it was a convergence weakness type of exo deviation, then you would resect the medial recti, both medial recti. And then if you have a basic deviation, then you could do a unilateral surgery and recess uh, one muscle and resect the other. So recess the lateral rectus, resect the medial rectus. Now, before I conclude, I just want to point out that what I've discussed in this video is various treatment options that are available to you if a patient has a decompensating exophoria. And those options relate to that GOODS acronym. So have we considered glasses? Have we considered orthoptics, drugs, surgery, etc.? What this video doesn't consider is that there could be an underlying reason that the decompensating foria is there that you need to manage. So as an example, if you go back to the etiologies of decompensating exophorias, it may be that glasses have been prescribed and the lens is decentered, which has created a prismatic effect. 
Well, in that instance, clearly what you're going to do is deal with that issue of the decentered lens. If, for instance, there is an underlying condition where the patient is on medication that may be leading to a decompensating exophoria, again, you'll need to deal with that as an issue. So don't forget to consider what may be causing the decompensating phoria and to deal with that before you start considering the options that we've discussed in this video. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.